All right. Turn some music. That's good. My mic looks good. Okay. So this video is my second video in my kind of all team series I'm coming up with here off the top of my head. Um, for this one, I want to go over kind of impedance control. Um, we'll go through like a USB example. So yeah, let me set this, start for there. So my all team design, let's do a file, new project. Um, a USB example. And let's make a schematic and also add a new PCB. Um, I will add my libraries to this. So I have an Altium library, a master setup here. Um, so for some of you that are not engineers, um, impedance routing means that you have a set resistance kind of for quality. Um, generally USB is 90 ohm impedance and RF is 50 ohm impedance and it has to do with the impedance and the signal and the speed and that comes down to like reflections and power transmission and loss. It's kind of a sweet spot for both communication protocols. So for USB, like I said, 90 ohms is kind of your uh, sweet spot. So what I'll do is go to my components. I will just go to my master library here. Um, get this to say Altium tutorials. Bigger, wider, there we go. All right, so I go to my schematic library over here. I put in USB. Um, here is a connector. If I grab this and pull it up and open up the model. You can see this is a, I guess, normal side up connector in a way. Um, so yeah, so what we'll do is start signals here. Um, it's also for impedance routing. This, in this case, it's impedance routing for differential signals. And what that means is USB, there's a positive and minus signal. So differentials, one's a positive, one's a negative. And there's some manipulation through here of how to transfer data like this. Um, I'm not really an expert in differential signals, but I understand it a little bit. Um, oh, let's see where this is. I think this is in my documents, maybe? Uh, recent? Uh, yeah, I don't know where to save this. That's all right. We'll get to it later. Anyways, um, for now I'll just call this V bus. And when you do differential signals, what you have to do is do underscore. N for one of them and underscore P for the other one for positive and negative. And you have to name the nets. So you name your nets. You also do a differential pair directive where you can add a differential pair net class uh, called USB. Um, and drop those here, here. Just like that. Um, so as I keep building this up, this will make more sense. So also what I want to do here, um, I'm just going to throw a chip on here to um, and simulate what most systems do. So most systems, well, I guess it's, it's changed a little bit, but uh, older systems, 
I guess let's throw some on desktop. Cool. Um, older examples, a lot of microcontrollers do not have built-in USB support. Now with all the Cortex stuff and everything like that, it changed a bit. Um, so nowadays, probably 20, 25% of micros do support um, do support uh, USB natively. So now you don't need this transceiver, but this is kind of the old method of having to put this, they call it a bridge. So you have a bridge here that is able to take your USB differential and transform it into a UART serial string. Um, let's grab a generic resistor 603. Let's grab whatever from here. Um, usually this reset line is like a, you need a pull up for it to keep it active. Um, I don't have a 3.3 volt source, but I put a port here and just and throw nuts around real quick. Um, this has a built-in voltage re regulator, but we don't need that. Grounds are good. Um, what else? Oh, if you look at a lot of reference USB diagrams, um, see a resistor in line here, and that's for signal integrity. Um, if you throw a little bit of resistance, like usually for USB, it's like 27 ohms on this line. It will help you with signal immunity from external signals, um, and especially differential signals. They, they can get a lot of noise, even though they're supposed to be end phase and cancel out. And that's how kind of works. But anyways, um, so usually this goes your micro. This would be like MCU. RX, see TX, uh, RTS and CTS is like request to send and clear to send, kind of like a handshaking protocol for USB, but we're not gonna worry about that either. Um, this example is basically just going over how to set this up. File this. There are some errors. Has one pin, only has one pin. Um, what that means is it doesn't like the, the port. Do set this to TX RX. I have my project set up. You can have your project set up where you can have the ports and name your signals for you as well. Not have it set up for this project. Uh, let's see what else has only one. I'm not sure what's expecting uh, to cheat it for now. We're gonna throw these no ECRs in here. That way, it basically ignores what we have. Um, tools, annotate schematic quietly. That. File again. Everything's good. Can't locate PCB. Great. Oh, that's where it is. Um. Yo, I'm not gonna use rooms for this. I don't use rooms a lot for my my projects. I should learn how to use them better, but I'm not going to for now. Um. So we got that going. Now we look here. We have our little circuit here. Now the first thing you have to do for differential signals and for impedance routing in general is you have to go to your design and layer stack manager. Let me open up my calculator because I know it. Right. So here's our layers. Um, obviously it's a little bit small. You know, or generally you want to aim for a 60, 62 mils is your normal size circuit board. So if we take all these, 
62. Um, so we need 45.8 more. Change this to 8.4. Now I have a total thickness here of 62. So this is for a two layer board. If you click down here on this tab down here on impedance, it'll open this side here for an add impedance profile. And what this says is it gives you a top and bottom reference for a two layer board. There's only top and bottom, so it's fine. If it's a four layer, it basically give you multiple options to say between layer, top layer, plane one, plane one, plane two, plane two and ground. So it gives you three different options to select from. Um, and all you wanna do is you wanna select differential here in your properties, target impedance, so I said 90 ohms, just like that. And what that gives us here now, so if you click on it, it shows you the actual stair, uh, layer stack. Um, you can pick different gaps to tell yourself different widths here. So for cost, I'm gonna try keeping this six mils so that means our trace width has to be about 19.74 mils based on how thick the circuit board is. And if I cut it in half, so say I had a half um, board, so instead of um, originally 12.6. So let's say it was a 31 mil, so 14. Seven point four. Yeah, I guess I could have just did half of this so I could get. So I did that, you see it cuts it makes the mills different here. I go back to uh fifty eight. Makes it fatter. And impedance all has to do with um a lot of different parameters. See, there's this S parameter of the distance between traces. There's a dielectric thickness, and the dielectric constant, and the thickness between the ground plane and the um, signal plane here. So there's a lot of different things here. And also while you're doing this, I have not played around this yet, so don't take this a lot to heart here. Um, you can put in material parameters now with Altium based on what you're actually doing. So like a uh, hassle lead free, you can pick your different foil thicknesses. You can pick your core and prepreg sizes. And what that does is it lets you bring in things like dielectric factors, conductance, temperature gradients, glass temperatures. Um, so it's pretty advanced now, but for now, I'm just gonna keep this. Keep it six mils. I'm gonna keep my thicknesses. Uh, my thickness is a little low, actually. Math wrong. I need a uh, 3.6. So 58.4. Oh, that's backwards. Okay. So now we have this profile set up, we can save it. Go back to here. Uh, let me just disconnect. It's here. Somehow. Okay. So next, go to our design rules, and under differential pair routing, make a new rule, and we can pull in our USB class, and we can click use impedance profile that we just created, and that sets the gaps and preferred widths for everything. Okay, hit okay. Uh, now if you look at our design, You'll notice one thing that's kind of annoying, I guess more or less about this type of connector. It's upright, nice USB one. Is generally 
no matter what transceiver you pick, these signals are going to be swapped. Ideally, you always want the, the signals to be right here, where you have positive and negative backwards, no matter what. So it gives you two options. You can put it this way and put the signals in this side. And you do route, differential pair routing. You might have to change. Uh... Oh, I've changed my dielectric thickness because how wide these are. Oh, these are going to. Oh, never mind. I know why. I know why. Um, design rules, parents. Set everything to six. Yeah, it doesn't let me change it there. So let me just pick a little smaller one. Um, or I can just change this gap. 15, 20. Small board. For sake of argument, let's do a tiny board. Like a 9 mil, 6, 10 mils. There we go. Save that now again. Back here. You know, it's nice when I do that, it automatically updates this too, so I don't have to change the rules again. So what you can do is either this. Super friendly here because of the, the way this signal works. You see, that another problem with this thickness is... Just even trying to route it in there. Actually, uh, here. Here, go to ten. Yeah. So yeah, for some reason, it has a hard time doing it this way. Um. So, you know, that's kind of the ideal way, but what ends up happening a lot of times. Oh, change my via rules real quick. Uh, routing vias, let's do like visualize numbers. I'm throwing out my normal numbers I use. The reason I use these numbers is uh, manufacturing cost. Once you do this for a while, you can start seeing the different patterns and cost of things. All right. This drop this down to here. That, that. So now I go to my PCB. You can see we got two uh signals here. Routed links are matched, the signals are matched, so they're all essentially the identical signal. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of a quick look at how to do it. Um, usually the way you want to do it for USB and high-speed signals is you want to have a ground plane to actually reference against, because when we did this calculation, this stack up. You know, it's kind of assuming that this bottom plane it is a ground plane in a way. Um, or technically we're it might not be that way for especially like a two-layer design. You know, when I start routing a lot of things around here, I could have easily passed signals under this. I mean I could add a keep out as well. Keep all this as ground, so that'd probably be the better idea. So you'd have a um, trace keep out of just making this all ground the whole time, keep it a, a constant number. But in four layer designs, you have that extra layer that you don't have to worry about it anymore. So, oh uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna keep making some more videos, um, more and more Altium tutorials. 
trying to uh, get more people on, the, on board with the all team train here. So um, any comments, videos you'd like to see, just feel free to leave them down, down below in the comment section. If you like this kind of content or just design engineering in general, electronics, um, I have a Twitch channel, um, Robotics, same name as my YouTube channel, Robotics 0 x 57 uh, Twitter, Instagram, yeah, so everything. Or subscribe here, obviously, on YouTube as well. So, all right, appreciate, appreciate you uh, tuning in and watching me, and uh, hopefully this is some good content. You learned something, and uh, I've got more videos up soon. All right, see you guys later.